think we might have found Australia's smartest teenager. Meet Territory teenager Peter Susanto. Oh. <laughs> leading neuroscience competition but he's not just a science and math whiz kid he's also a finalist for the 2020 northern territory literary awards and peter Susanto joins us now from darwin it's nice to see you peter you are 13 you should be in grade 8 but you're actually in year 11 and you're studying one grade 12 subject my kids like to stick toys up their nose so <laughs> i want to know what did your parents do to make you so smart are we just born that way? <laughs> uh, well, I'd say it's my genes, I guess, are from both my parents. And I'm not just saying this to keep them both happy, guys. <laughs> uh, in fact, from what I've learned in biology, <laughs> yeah, from what I've learned in uh, biology, intelligence is a polygenic trait. And that basically means that it's from both your parents. You get multiple genes coding for it. I also think that I have to thank my parents because they nurtured me really well and they always try to expand my mind, they try to expand my horizons. So, but Peter, are your mum and dad as smart as you? Perhaps. Well, they haven't taken an IQ test, so <laughs> we wouldn't know exactly statistically, but but I think that in terms of knowledge and in terms of what they thought, uh, what they've taught me, they're a lot smarter than me. And as I said, I really oh. have to thank my parents. We're all oh, that's You're only 13, Peter. 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 Give yourself time. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's the time to say you could start world peace after this, Peter. Yeah, that's very smart. Peter, you're going to be 15 oh. when you go to uni. What do you plan to study? And, and can you even be a uni student at that age? Well, I have to get the ATAR first, <laughs> but I want to study medicine. Uh, specifically, radiology is what I'm interested in right now, because uh, I want to help people. I really want to help people and have a positive impact on my community. But in terms of uh, uni, I've done my research, and it seems that most unis, no matter your age, uh, just require the required ATAR and for medicine, the clinical aptitude test scores. But some unis uh, will need your the chancellor's permission or your parents' permission if you're a bit younger than the other kids. <laughs> you could be like the real life Doogie Hauser. You could be a doctor and you could work out how to get those toys out of my kids' noses. Um, there you go. Uh, now you have um, to explain what Doogie Hauser. He doesn't. He's too young. Yeah. <laughs> Doogie Hauser is like a junior doctor back in the. A TV, show. It was TV, a TV show. show. Uh, now, you took out Australia's leading neuroscience competition last year, the Aussie Brain Bee Challenge, um, and you've shared some of the hardest questions that you had to face during the competition. So we thought we'd put our resident brainiac, well, he looks smart because he wears glasses, um, against you, Joe Hildebrand. Oh, hang on a minute. Are you ready to take on Australia's smartest kid? Oh, do I have time for another coffee? <laughs> uh, I don't think this is going to end well. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. This is the first question. These are actually the questions in the quiz. Okay. What nucleus of the brain plays a significant role in addiction? My nucleus. Um, is it the hippocampus? Peter? Is that correct? The, the answer is the nucleus accumbens. Oh, oh yeah, you're and, uh, that. The nucleus accumbens. The nucleus accumbens uh, reinforces behaviours like risk-taking and impulsiveness, which uh, lead to addiction. Wow. Well, all I can say, Peter, is where were you when I was at uni? <laughs> <laughs> all right, question number two. What are the three types of uh, dendritic spines? Um, Chewy, Dewey and Louie. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, can you set him on the right oh. path? <laughs> Those are 
those are some pretty funny names. Uh, the names are also very interesting actually. There's thin, stubby, and mushroom. Thin, uh, thin spines are uh, what happens in the dendritic spines before information is encoded, and afterwards you have your stubby and your mushroom spines. Ah. Wow, mushroom spines. I didn't actually even understand the question. No, neither do I. <laughs> All right, question number three. Which two proteins become dysfunctional in Alzheimer's disease? Uh... in which patients can conceptualise speech but not produce proper speech like I just did then. Mm -hmm. I think that's a, I think it's me in this segment. <laughs> um, the that can conceptualise speech, I, I, I don't know, muteness? Peter? The things, the disorders called Broca's aphasia and someone could nod or understand what you're trying to say to them but when they try to speak, it'll come out garbled, or you won't be able to understand what they're trying to say. Yeah. You just described Studio 10. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, you're an absolute rock star. Yes. You'll be oh. representing Australia in the International Brain Bee Competition next year, if it all goes ahead. Uh, we wish you the very best. Mm. We're right behind you. Oh, huge congratulations. Remember us when yeah. uh, you are a big star. You're going and a, and a doctor, we may need it. <laughs> yeah. Good on you, Peter. See you at the Union Bar. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, Joe. Thanks very much. <laughs> thanks. And thanks for having me, guys. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Oh, you're a oh, oh, What a you delightful young man. Great kid. Great kid. And uh, Peter, if you've got any jobs going down the line. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Like, uh, I'll do mine. Yeah. I just, I just hope I can make a difference in the world. Oh. oh. Yes, you will. He's Look, yeah. adorable. Again, if you need like a janitor. You. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Someone to shine your shoes, we're in. Uh, now, before we go to the break, COVID-19 figures are in from Victoria. Five more people have lost their lives, unfortunately.